The terrors to get us started when the referee does blow his whistle. The terrors in their claret and blue and Hemel in all green as we do get off underway. As George Williams whips the ball in, it's been flicked on at the far post and it's an unbelievable miss there. Looks to switch the play to Montel McKenzie. It's a great ball, but McKenzie tried the first time pass. He's out of position now. And Brandon Goodship goes forward, tries to thread Malachi Linton. Linton into the box for his first goal for the club. It's blocked away. Brilliant recovery work there from a Jay who actually gave the original crossfield ball. He got back in there to deny Linton his first shot and goal of the game. Linton, I'm sure he'll be itching to get his first goal in Clarence and Blue. Brilliant from Josh Williams, picked up by his opposite fullback McKenzie up against Hamblin. McKenzie gets the better of Hamblin on the edge of the box now. Hamlin stays in it though, can't. It's fallen all the way through here to George Williams who has a free strike and it's looks like it was blocked away for a corner. I think it may have been Harry Jones that got the touch on it. He was the one that was almost floored by the, by the, the strike. Out wide, J.E. is back up now as he maybe recognises he has to go back and defend now. Out wide, Harry Jones clips the ball in. It's a great ball. Out to Brandon Goodship in the box. Goodship strikes. Fantastic save there from James Taylor. It is right at him, but he had to react quickly to get down to his right. And just like that, Ajay is straight back down again. Perhaps a chance just to relieve the pressure then applied there from Brandon Goodship. And now Mackenzie goes in over on this far side. First touch is good. Attacking Hamlin. Now into the box. Onto his left. And now back onto his right. Hamlin's on the floor. It's a strike for Mackenzie, and that would have been some goal. It was wide at the near post, but had, had Leo Hamlin on real ropes there. He was pinning Linton and just managed to head that one down to his fellow player and now Josh Williams roaming forwards manages to get on the end of that it's a good run here from the Hemel number three he now gets his cross in it's attackable it's spilled by uh, Benfield and that is an astounding miss from Bailey Brown and that's two now where Hemel should have taken their chances and arguably should be 2-0 up spread in the play it's a brilliant ball from Bailey Brown and now George Williams gets on the end of that one up against Jones Williams onto his right he's gonna have a go and it's saved by Gerard Benfield and I could see what Williams was trying there he was trying to uh, launch that into the far right corner but it was well held by Benfield in the end straight back forwards though Parsons for the Terrors intercepted good sliding challenge there wins it back now Linton Linton to Goodship Goodship's one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper can he slot home it's a fantastic save from Taylor and that's one where you'd put money on Goodship slotting that one home he'll be disappointed with that but it was a fine save there from Taylor it may actually fall here for Brown in the box now it's close to Felivi it's off the post will he be tapped home and it is and it's the opener Good ship then. Outswinger, it's another poor delivery there, and that brings an end to the half. And perhaps a half where, if, you, if, you were, if it went in at 0 0, you perhaps say it may be a, a fair result. But <laughs> Hill then switches the play, looking for Hines. Hines takes it down well. Infield now. Back out to Brown. Brown strikes, it's a save by the feet of Jared Benfield. A routine stop, but one that had to be made. Montel McKenzie over to take that free kick on the far side he's gone early to George Williams down the line over on the far side Williams up against Hamden hits the byline gets his cross and it's a good ball in it's tapped by Hill saved by Benfield and the follow up is in and it's Bailey Brown celebrates with the travelling Hemel fans and he's doubled Hemel's advantage the Tudors are 2-0 up here Weymouth nil, Hemel Hempstead 2 and perhaps that might be a change for the Terrors, O'Connell has had his minutes severely limited since the arrivals of the likes of Alfred Rutherford, Linton, Harry Parsons. Before then, he was really irregular the whole of last season and the start of this season as Hemel had the ball. Williams strikes, good save by Benfield, an outstretched double palm save there from Gerard Benfield to deny George Williams what would have been a lovely finish, but not quite enough on it to beat Benfield from there. What I would say we're maybe looking at now is a three-back where Charlie Rowan has gone back to it. And the ball's actually threaded through here to Olu Jirajay on the byline. Squares back. Linton! Linton brings one back for the Terrors. He's been searching for his first goal. 
he's gone games without one, but now the release off his shoulders, he's off the mark in Claret and Blue. Linton is a terror, he's got one back. It's Weymouth 1, Hemel Hempstead 2. But it's exactly the response that Weymouth needed, having gone 2 0 down, to get that goal back so quickly. And this, again, those changes have, uh, have, have, have helped. Um, it was Duajai, it was uh, um, a long way forward, further forward I think I've seen him all season. That cut the ball back and, that, and a simple finish for Linton there, so yeah, hopefully game on. Up into the air then. Bearwish clears out wide. It's a good ship. Good ship over the top to Ezio Torre. Flag stays down. Torre, one on one with the goalkeeper. Ezio Torre strikes and into the back of the net. Ezio Torre wheels away. He loves a goal here at the Bob Lucas Stadium. He's an impact sub. He makes the impact. Ezio Torre equalises for the Terrors. It's Weymouth 2, Hemel Hempstead 2. Yeah, great finish from Torre there. I have to say, I thought he was offside. From this lofty position here, I think he was probably a yard or two off, but I'm not the, uh, the linesman. The uh, Hamel Hempstead defence are going apoplectic with, uh, with, with rage over the decision, and uh, I'm there sure it's an offside, an offside uh, call, but uh, the linesman hasn't uh, given it. Good job we haven't got VAR and uh, down here at the problem. I think if there were to be, it'd be stopped almost every play look at almost everything that goes on at this level of football. Yeah, I'm sure there would have been words of that similar uh, ilk from Charlie Rowan there as the ball played out to the far side. There's a chance for Hemel, he's whipped across goal. Felivi with a strike and Felivi puts Hemel back ahead. It's a very soft goal and just when Weymouth had all the momentum, we were giving them so much praise. Sloppy defending and Felivi taps into the far corner and just like that it's Weymouth 2, Hemel Hempstead 3. Down the line, headed straight back forwards by Brown. Cook chased down. Felivi reacts quickest into the box now. He doesn't have a whole lot on, but his cutback inaccurate. Tom Berwish dispossessed on the edge of the box. Out wide here to George Williams. Edge of the box, onto his left. He strikes and gets it all wrong. Muddles his feet up almost, and that one's out of play for a Weymouth goal kick. Good chip then, clips all over the top, Linton loses out, it's the edge of the box, Bearwish strikes, it's bouncing around, it's taking the deflection, and that will go out for a corner. It's one of those where it really could have gone anywhere, that strike from Tom Bearwish, and Weymouth have a corner. Ball swept in then, it's bouncing around, and there's a Weymouth player on the floor, but nothing given, it's out to Bearwish, what a save from Taylor! And then over the top. Linton may get there. Linton across the face of goal. Yes. Good chips arriving. The head is down and the head is in. Brandon Goodchip, he's the man in form. He's leveled the game. It's Weymouth 3, Hemel Hempstead 3. Brandon Goodchip at the goals again. Well, we've gone from a game that was going to be last on all match of the day to one that I think will probably be first on the, on the basis of this second half for showing. And how about that from Malachi Linton? Kept the ball in play and set up good chip at the far post. He was never going to miss it. Headed it down beyond the Hemel goalkeeper. And just like that, we're all square and it's 3 all. What an end to this game it could be. Yeah, he did really well, Linton, there. Just lifted the ball, didn't hit it too hard. Just lifted it to that far post. And you probably heard me shouting yes as soon as the cross went over because I knew that uh, good chip would score. Thompson takes a touch, looks for Linton. Linton gets a touch on it but it goes all the way through to Hamlin onto his right foot now infield Linton has space Linton has a go and a sighter there from Malachi Linton nothing to test Taylor in goal cleared away unconvincingly though O'Connell wins it heads it down Torre back to O'Connell will O'Connell get there he's running through a goal to make it four and it's into the back of the net and Dwayne has stolen it it's 4-3 O'Connell with the winner and even Gerard Benfield is up here in the celebrations. What can't this team do? When they look down, they get straight back up. A knockout punch here at the end of this game. They spark the Tudors. It's Weymouth 4, Hemel Hempstead 3. Wow. There you go. So, Sir Keane O'Connell is the hero of the day. I was just going to say just before that chance, the one criticism I had of James Taylor, the Hemel Hempstead goalkeeper, is his kicking hasn't been that great. And that was shown then it was a... Wasn't well, a particularly good clearance that Keeler Cole, uh, Keeler Cole picked up, ran on through and uh, slotted the ball past him. And what a game this is. I mean, 
I'm more, I, I would say I'm in disbelief, but to be honest, I'm not. The character that this team possesses is praised every game by Bobby Wilkinson, and this is a prime example. Keelan O'Connell, he's been limited with minutes. Ezio Torre, limited with minutes. They've both come on and they've both made an unbelievable difference in this game. Rowan then clips the ball towards the corner. And there goes actually the full time whistle. Nine minutes of additional time played. And Weymouth, well, how about that? I, I'm really lost for words at this point. Weymouth go on to win the game 4 3.